Hi, my name is Rich DeStanislaw. I'm with the Doc Fritchie chapter of Trot Unlimited, and I'm your feature tire for today. Today, I would like to introduce you to tying the Helgramite. The Helgramite is the nymphal stage of the Dobson fly, and it's found throughout the rivers and streams in Pennsylvania. It has great notoriety as both a trout fly and as a bass fly. It's found in water in, that is clean, and particularly after rains when water gets dirty and you think it's not worth fishing, put on a Helgramite nymph and you'd be surprised what you can turn up. Without further ado, let's try to tie a Helgramite nymph. We're tying the Helgramite nymph. First, I put in a, a hook. It, it's a streamer hook. I've debarbed it, of course, and I'm going to start by, on the straight part of the shank, making turns of 030 lead weight. I'm going to make these turns tight against each other, and I'm going to cover about two-thirds of this hook with lead weight. I'm going to pinch off the excess smooth it out there now I'm going to start with the thread I'm going to lock this lead weight in and cover it up somewhat I need to get back to where I'm going to put the tail in I'm going to run another layer up over the lead weight I don't like it to spin around I'm going to go back, cover this up again, and make a base down here all the way to the bend so that when I tie the tail in, it's not going to spin around. I'm going to use foam on this. This is 1 8 inch black closed cell foam. And I've cut about 3 8 of an inch width. And I'm going to cut about, oh, maybe half an inch out of that. I'm going to make a triangle at the end that I tie in. I always like to use the triangle because you start catching it and you gradually catch it. And as you work toward the thicker with your thread, the thicker part of, of the cell foam, you're catching more and more of it. Now, I'll cut this to shape when I'm all done. I'm going to have a forked rubber tail out of this. Now, I'm ready for the body. This is an easy fly to tie. This is UV polar chenille. It's in both purple and black, very sparkly. This is actually going to be the ribbing, but it's going to represent the legs on this. And I'm going to cut about, oh, a, maybe an eight, six to eight inch segment. I'm going to tie it in right in front of the tail, lock it in place, and let it hang back over the tail because I'm going to use it as a ribbon. For the main part of the body, black chenille. And I've cut about an 8-inch segment of plain black chenille. I'm going to strip some of this off so I have the threads to lock in. And I'm going to tie this in at the same point where I tied in the UV chenille. Now, I'm going to take my tying thread and bobbin and go up about two, um, about two thirds of the way up the length of the hook so that I haven't gone all the way to the end of the lead weight yet. And I'm going to let this hang. I like to use my bobbin as, as an indicator of where I need to start and stop. I'm going to take my black chenille and make turns toward the bobbin. I'm 
And when I get to the bobbin, I'm going to make some turns, but I'm not going to cut the chenille off. Now, I'm going to take the polar chenille and make turns in the gaps of the black chenille up to the same point where the black chenille is tied off. And I'm going to tie off the polar chenille also, but not cut it. Now, I'm going to take about an inch and a half inch strip of the black closed cell phone, the same material we use for the tail. I'm going to cut a V to tie it in, as I did for the tail. I'm going to I need to get these materials out of the road. I'm going to tie this in by the point, and I want to get it this rubber, closed cell rubber, back to where I actually ended and locked in the chenille. And that should take care of the point that I cut so that now I'm back to a square piece. This is going, this rubber is going to serve as the carapace and the head later. Now I'm going to go back and get first the black chenille and make about, oh, three turns and get it up toward the eye, but not all the way onto the eye. And I'm going to lock it off again. Now I can cut this excess off. Notice I have not gone all the way to the eye. Now I'm going to take the polar chenille and really, I'm going to make a couple of extra turns in here. These are going to be the longer legs. And then I'm going to tie these off at the same place as I ended the black chenille. Again, leaving room, not going all the way to the eye. Now I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to fold the carapace forward over the chenilles that I've tied off and make the carapace. Then I'm going to bend the rubber back, work my thread up toward the eye, and now I'm right near the eye, I'm going to form the head, a round head. But I'm going to leave some excess here because I'm going to make pincers out of this. So I'm tying this off and I can put my whip finish on right at this point. So I brought my thread to the eye underneath the rubber, made my whip finish. I can cut my thread off. And for pincers, I want the pincers to be about a quarter of an inch long. So I've square cut that, and I'm making a V toward the eye. And I'll, I'll show you as I, as I finish here. so that the eye is exposed, and back at the tail, I'm doing the same thing for the tail. I'm actually going to take this out of the vise to do this.
Now, as you can see, I have pincers at the head and the eye is exposed so I can tie the fly on. And I have a, a nice forked rubber tail. The last thing I'm going to do is trim up some of the legs. I'm going to trim the top. I'm going to leave the legs stick out at the side. I'm going to trim the bottom. Again, I'm leaving the legs stick out at the side. And if you want, you could do a little bit of a taper from the carapace back to the tail, but don't cut the ones under the carapace, the legs under the carapace. And in all honesty, there's your finished fly. It's shaggy looking, but it, it works. And uh, I think the flash, particularly purple, I don't know why, purple seems to drive fish wild. The purple black color, the shiny color, really works. And the suggestive pincers, carapace, and tail really make this an effective fly, both for bass and for, uh, for trout. So that's the Helgramite nymph. Mm -hmm.